<laughs> Squad buddies, y'all ready? Let's go kill him. Hey, Sadama, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I am good, child. I'm good, child. I'm just over here just fangirling, honey. <laughs> I got <laughs> Miss Sadama, baby. Okay. <laughs> um, before becoming a stingette, what other dance experiences did you have? Um, well, bef right before becoming a stinger, I was on the Jackson Nolan dance team. We were the Golden, well, we are the Golden Phillies. Mm -hmm. um, I was on the team for four years. The second, the last two years, I was the captain. Okay. Um, in addition to that, I was in the, or on a team called Alumni. Mm -hmm. It's like a hip hop organization or hip hop dance team. And before that, I was in Jump Off. That's also hip hop. And then it kind of like merged into Alumni. Mm, so you were just well rounded. Dance. Yeah, hip hop's like my heart. So, mm, mm. I, and I saw a lot of hip hop um, during like Asia's year. I saw a lot of that. So, and you really like stuck out then. So, yeah, Thank I see you. that. Okay, good. Um, so, in your opinion, what's your definition of a sting it? Hmm, a sting it. Well, let's see. A sting it is obviously a dancer for Alabama State for anybody who didn't already know that mm -hmm. but the thing that makes this thing gets this thing gets is the sex appeal i think i oh, think yeah. it's the sex appeal and just the attitude that comes with just knowing you are her like Period. you are that girl um so a thing to me is just ah she's just that girl literally. Period. yeah that's what she is yeah and she's a great dancer obviously but i really want to say a lot about the sex appeal because i think that's what makes us different than any other team Definitely. it's the sex appeal that's true that's true because y'all serve nothing but sex baby <laughs> Period. every little girl's dream or every girl's dream every man's fantasy oh, you better give it you better give it <laughs> <laughs> so how was it transitioning from the golden phillies to the sensational stingettes oh um so the Golden Phillies was just about excitement and just book. You know, you just have yeah. fun. But the Stingettes was sexy, so I didn't know anything about sex appeal. Not really. I mean, I knew a little bit, but not for real. For mm. real. I think that was the biggest change. Like I said, that's what makes you a Stingette. So getting into that and finding who I was in that moment or just getting comfortable in your own skin, because right. I don't think a lot of dancers are, and I was one of those dancers. Mm -hmm. um, also, the look. Like... The look changed like in high school we wore these big old hairstyles mm -hmm. and i think i even auditioned with a big like curly Ooh. wig and it was a like a no uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was a no but, like that's not the same gets and even to this day i still struggle or i'm working to like better like my hairstyles and stuff mm -hmm. just to get into who i am as a dancer because your hair is everything when it comes yeah. to dancing so yes. That's true. Yeah, like That's definitely that true. Previous. Yeah. That and then makeup. Like, we did wear makeup in high school, but I didn't really know how to put on a face. Even throughout my years as a stinger, I still don't think I really knew how to put on a face. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was until my senior year when I got an elite that I learned how to do, a, like, makeup. So, mm. I'm still learning. But, yeah. So Nobody has I'm... ever, like, said that. Like, you know, okay. um, giving face and... Um, not necessarily giving face, but, you know, doing makeup and the aesthetic. Nobody really says anything about the aesthetic. Yeah, and I think that's huge. I even think that was, like, one of my biggest downfalls, that mm -hmm. I didn't know how to do hair and makeup. And still, to this day, I always tell people, like, if you have an opportunity to learn to do hair and makeup and you say you're a dancer, you need to be a hairstylist oh, yeah. as well. You need to at least be able to do your own hair. Yeah, you know? that's true. So. Yes. So what made you want to become a stingette? Well, I told you I'm going to be honest. So, <laughs> actually, being a stingette was not really my dream. It mm. wasn't. Um, I went off to the military right after high school. Right. And while I was away, it was between the stingettes and Southern. Like, I really wanted mm. to be a doll. In high school, my coach, she used to make me learn the dolls field shows and mm. teach them to my team. So, wow. that, and then, because I liked hip-hop, before Paris Global was a thing, mm -hmm. I used to go and learn her choreography, too. Mm. 
and try to like implement that as well. So I really was like trying to lean towards the dogs more so. But while I was away, my mom thing was, hey, you already got accepted into state. It's right at home. Just go and see you if you like the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. I went to Alabama State and I literally fell in love with Alabama State. Um, I am big on just African American vibes, period. So like yeah. I was the little nerd who used to go to the Wednesday class that we used to have <laughs> on campus um, and learn more about the African American, uh, just us in general. Mm-hmm. Um, and then as I kept going, I'm like, everybody was like, hey, don't you dance? Ain't you that girl? You know that little say, oh. ain't you that girl? Yeah. Like, <laughs> what girl? <laughs> aren't you going to try out? I'm like, well, sure. I mean, I'll try out and see if I make it. Mm Because I know that was another thing. It was said that people from Birmingham couldn't make the dog, um, not the dogs, but couldn't make the sting at 10. Mm. Like, that was a big deal. Mm. So I was like, well, I'm not too worried about if I can make it. It's just, I mean, if I make it, can I stick it out? Because my co-captain at the time, uh, Kayla, she actually made the team before I did. Mm. Like I said, I went to the military first. So she went straight to school. She made the team. So she scratched that, that, um, stereotype of oh you can't make the team now i know i can make it it's mm-hmm. just can i stick it out because she didn't stay the whole time for whatever her reasons were right um so yeah and as i started to look at them i'm like oh, okay like i said i always like the stingers and the dogs so i was like one of these teams i want to be on yeah and i'm already at them state let's give it a try i made it and obviously stayed the whole time so mm. I, never, I, I never thought you would want to be a dog Oh, yeah. Hmm. That was my thing. I, I wanted to learn more about technique because um, mm-hmm. I hadn't learned a lot about it. So I was like, they have a lot of technique. At that time, I don't think the Stingets really were into right. as much technique, you know. Right. So I wanted to learn about that. And I wanted to get it far as far as I could from Birmingham. Mm-hmm. And my yeah. government went far enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was my thing. Oh, Lord. So um, what Stinget inspired you the most? Oh, you know, Asia asked me that. Ooh. And you know what I told her? What you tell her? Me. Okay. Ooh. I inspired me the most. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Literally, um, I am not a person that goes back and look at a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but honestly, as I think about it now, she might have been the most big inspiration to me. Yeah. Um, well, she probably stuck in my head the most because she was my captain. And he was my two-year captain. Right, 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 right. So I guess I want to say Asia Martin. And even to this day, like, baby, Asia posts a picture. I'm, and I hate when she love to want to... Um, Stop people from coming out. Of I'm like, first of all, I got your information, so I'm going to hit you up directly. Exactly. I like this. <laughs> but she's like my, probably outside of myself, she would be like my favorite singer. Yeah, yeah. She was that girl. She was that girl. She, she is that girl. Oh, hello? <laughs> <laughs> so how was your first tryout? Like, were you nervous? Oh, you taking me back. <laughs> um... I think I probably was nervous, but then at the same time, I probably wasn't. Mm -hmm. Um, No shade, but the choreo, I learned the choreo. I'm good on field shows, Mm -hmm. or at that time, I was good on picking up stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, So I was actually going after rehearsals or uh, audition practices and teaching other people the routine. Mm. So Mm. I really didn't feel like I had too much to worry about as far as making it. If anything would have been my look, that wouldn't have let me make it. Right. but honestly, I say all that, and then here comes the audition day. The day of audition, after we did everything, and Bridget did this thing when she put, like, the numbers on our right. uh, panty bottoms, mm-hmm. she didn't call my number. Ooh. And so I was like, oh, my God, I ain't make the team. And I kind of was sad, but then at the same time, I, oh, y'all don't know me like that. <laughs> I kind of didn't care. I was like, yeah. oh, okay, well, I can make it. I'm going to do something else. Yeah. Um, yeah. Still fine. So, Period. You um, know your work. You know what? But it did hit me a little bit. It hit yeah. me on my chest a little bit. I was like, dang, I ain't make it. But my number was literally balled up. Mm. And so I went to start walking out the door. I was like, dang, I ain't make it. Okay. And before I got out of the, because we auditioned, I think, in the band room this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, before I even made it out of the band room, she was like, no, nope, where you going? Right. I was like, well, I'm going. You didn't call my number. <laughs> mm-hmm. She was like, I did. I was like, no, you didn't call my number. And um, I looked down, she was like, and it was so bothered up. She was like, you're number 17, right? And I was like, yeah. She was like, no, you you made it. Oh. <laughs> <Made> okay, it. <laughs> period. Okay. Yes, so I before am. I even had a chance to feel bad, yeah. honestly, it happened so fast. I probably would have felt bad if I made it through the doors. Yeah. And saw everybody else that didn't make it because everybody was crying and everything. Yeah. So I probably would have felt bad, but I didn't even get a chance to because I didn't even make it out the door before she was mm. like, no, you, you made it. Mm. And I was like, okay. Mm. I mean, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. 
So how was it crabbing under Asia Martin? Oof. Oof. Okay. Um, Asia was a little case, yeah. <laughs> Asia, Asia was something serious, yeah. for real. Um, Asia, I feel like she had something to prove. And yeah. not just to herself, but to Bridget, because that is your coach. So mm-hmm. you do want to... Um, Bridget gave you an opportunity to be the captain right. of this illustrious team. So... You don't want to let her down, and you don't want to be demoted either. I don't know if demotion is a thing, but you don't want that to happen. You don't want it to happen. Yeah. So I felt like she was like, uh, she was really, really hard. I remember our first day. Oh, right after we made the team, she, we all upstairs. We in the um, choir room, mm-hmm. and she walks in. We all excited. We get to know each other. All of my sisters, and she walk in, and it's none of it. Oh. None of it. Yeah. Um, y'all can go and take off y'all makeup and take off y'all hair, and um. Y'all can come back here because we got breakfast. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Yeah. So dive in. She she was a forest for real. I remember one day, oh, when all the upperclassmen came back, mm-hmm. she had this thing like Asia talk. Yeah. She was jumping. I'm like, Asia, if you don't sit down. <laughs> Like, she was yelling at us because I think we had messed up something. And this was, like I said, this was the first day that the, all the ups had came back. Yeah. Like, you're a pre-drill. Like, you had tryouts. And mm-hmm. then you had pre-drill right afterwards. Right. And so, it was like, that was the first day that the ups saw us. And she was not happy with what they were seeing. Mm. And so, she let them know that she was going to get in our butt. And, like, she literally jumped, like, a whole five yards to mm. get in our face to tell us, you ain't going to embarrass me. Period. Like, but, I mean, I, I get it, though. She's yeah. psycho. <laughs> She's psycho. And we're psycho for being here. <laughs> like, <laughs> are you girl? But like literally, she was that person, but then at the same time, she was a whole nother person. Yeah. Like, oh my God, her professionalism was not to be matched. Right. Uh, she's I'm in a room with this book. Um, and it had I really wish I could see a book. Mm-hmm. Like, I wish I could see it now. I wonder if it was the choreo written out. I don't really know, but she used to look at her book and she would tell us and then she'll sit down, then she'll get back up, she'll show us something, then she'll look at her book. Then like she used to give us her finger, like it, like, okay, this is her hand, this is our hand. She'd mm-hmm. be like, Okay, come on. This is how she would walk us to our spot on oh. the field. Like yeah. it was crazy. <laughs> and I used to love that because first of all I got to touch Asia Martin. Like still a big deal in our head. Like she is still a big deal. Like it's still Asia. Yeah. Like yeah. be Asia. So like it was crazy, um, but she was really great at that. Like we didn't know what the field show was gonna look like until y'all see. It. When right. y'all see, actually y'all saw it before we did because mm. we saw the video. We didn't know what the formations really were because right. um, she wouldn't walk us to the formation, so we didn't know. Then we had attention after you shouldn't watch it, you didn't fell, fell back in. Mm-hmm. So you don't know what everybody else is. Sometimes it's like, okay, where, what is this? Right. So. Yeah, it was it was different. It was it was every day was a, a different day. Yeah, like we used to literally pray before we walked in there. Because I I hear like when when Asia comes in, like she runs. It's a workshop. It's it's she runs it. She go she goes. She's, she's not here to play. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You're gonna stay until you get it, or you're not gonna make this cut. Right. So what do you think that she taught you as a, a crab? Mm, Asia taught me so 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 much. Um, one thing I think more morally, what she's taught me is that when you learn something about yourself that needs to be changed, you change it. Yeah. Like I said, age was crazy then. Mm-hmm. I don't really think she was like that. She's like that now mm-hmm. at all. Like I watched her mature and like she was a kid. No shade, but all of us were kids. Right. I don't think people realize that. Yeah. Like I think age was like seventeen. Mm-hmm. Like age was so young. Like when she first got to college, like she was the youngest. So by the time she became our captain, you're still super, super young. Mm-hmm. So granted, you had a, the ability to do two more years after us. So you right. had to have been young. Um, and you literally saw a difference and a change of her. Just the way she handled things throughout the whole time that I've known her, like she's grown. And I think that her growth has shown me that I don't have to. And not even I don't have to. I'm not able to stay the same person. You right. must mature. You must um, evolve into somebody new and I think that that's something that she really really has shown me without even trying to show mm. me that like dang that's that's deep name. though that's deep that's yeah deep. like she definitely has shown me that mm. um so how was your overall experience as a crab 
I talk too much. <laughs> it was pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I still don't know when to shut up. I say whatever come up in my mind. Really? I do whatever I want to do. Um, yeah. But honestly, it was it was so much. It was like a life changing experience, yeah. and I love it because it, it showed me like like people get nervous to this day to perform and play. Last night I shot a video. Um, you might not know who Lala Dior is, mm-hmm. but she danced with um, Janet Jackson before. Mm-hmm. Uh, she just do a lot of things, and so. Uh, Caleb shot us last night at the club or whatever. Like we did just a show, yeah. and some people was like, "Oh well, I'm nervous." What's nervous to think it? Yeah. I don't get nervous. Like, yeah. that's one thing that I think, like, dancing and performing in so many different places and you being who you are, it's just like, I don't even get nervous. I don't know if the other singers do, but that took my nervousness away. Like, yeah. I just go out there and I'm, I'm sharing my talents with y'all. So right. I hope you enjoy it. You know what I mean? Exactly. So. Mm, mm, mm. So, um, let me see. <clears throat> so, as a crab, who took you under their wing? Ex- excluding Asia. Okay. Um, we only had four four upperclassmen. Mm-hmm. And my my big sister was Courtney. Courtney Scott was my okay. big sister. Yeah. Um, so Courtney, I would say, probably did the most of taking me under her wing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but honestly, they really didn't take us under their wings. Like, yeah. Asia really was... Yeah. That's it. It's yeah. Asia. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, they really didn't even have the chance to. Well, I mean, some of them may have, mm-hmm. but I won't even say that anybody really took me under their wing. Right. Real for real. Right, right. Not at all. Hmm. So, how was your um, experience on the TV show Bama State Style as a new girl? Okay, so Bama State Style, um, I'm going to tell you my whole thought process on Bama State Style. <laughs> I feel like. We didn't have much uh, much interaction with Bama State Style, to be honest. I right. mean, I think I, they may have came, we being us as a collective, of course you had those individuals who was pinpointed and was a part of the storyline. Mm-hmm. I wasn't a part of the storyline. Right. So they didn't have much interaction with my with, with me. Um, they came into the room one day and filmed us. I think mm-hmm. that's the only time they really came up there and filmed right. us. And it was, I'm kind of glad because I didn't like, what they were trying to do like I feel like they was trying to create a false narrative when it was so much and it still is so much that you can pinpoint and use mm-hmm. from being on that team like or just being in the that whole building right right literally it's so much drama that you don't even have to falsely create and I feel like that's what they were trying to do like especially like, between the stingers and the honeybees too I was just gonna say that and yes. I love the honeybees yes my mama swear but down she a honeybee <laughs> Talking to you, but no, you, um, uh, you like, literally talking to the audience, so you're good. Yeah. So, seriously, <laughs> like, she thought she was a honeybee, and I love the honeybees. And not Miss Williams, like our coach, but the honeybee coach, right. I probably talk to her more than I talk to Bridget now, mm. like to mm. this day, because I just love her. Like, she's such a sweetheart, and she's so for you. Like, yeah. to me, she is. I don't know about everybody else's opinion of her, but to me, she's just so for me, and like, she's always been so supportive of supportive of me like even down to simple stuff like ain't nobody teach me to oh before you stretch you need to warm up she taught me that mm. like which you've never been my coach right. ever but that's what taught me that so it was just like mm. the drama between the stingers and the honeybees isn't real exactly. and i hated that they tried to do that because it's it's such a dis it's a disgrace to me like to try to pinpoint oh small against big because that's right. pretty much it, what you're doing you hit that's right exactly on the nail what you're doing. and yes. it's just like that's lame to me. Yeah. It's very lame. It, even to the point where a lot of people don't know that I was on live with one of the honeybees at one point. Like, that was my sister. Like, yeah. I used to go around with her and everything. Like, but yeah, that was lame to me because I was like, no, you don't have to create something when it's already things here. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah, I really didn't like that. You hit me. it right on the nail. Oof. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. So how was Miss Williams as a sponsor? Oh. It depends on which day. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> it depends on which day. And I it's crazy. I, I thought about these questions and what you would ask me and I'm just like, Well, I'm not a liar. Right. So I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, there were some days I hated her. Literally. Like I didn't I, I won't say hey, I really strongly disliked her. Um, some days I really loved her. She 
she can be helpful to you, but mm-hmm. then at the same time, she has some type of malicious ways. Yeah. So her malicious ways can be a downfall and an issue for me, um, especially when I don't care who you are. Like, I'm going to say what I want to say. Yeah. And if it's wrong, it's wrong. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, and she's not the only one. It's like that with that whole band, to be honest. So, um, but literally, like, she's amazing sometimes. Um, then you had to remember, well, I feel like a lot of the things that Asia may have done or the things that I may not have liked of Asia um, were even stemmed from Bridget. Like, yeah. you have so much pressure under you or on you because of what Bridget may be putting in your ear right. that you feel just a certain way instead of being who you really are. And I feel like she may have even altered who Asia really was. And yeah. that's why I said, like, I feel like Asia grew and changed and became her own mm. like, Asia over time and getting away and seeing like okay all these people really not for you right and i feel like bridget was that type of person like sometimes like for example um some people don't know but like uh my last year at honda that was the that was the straw for me Mm. that was the end for me ever wanted this to get um i didn't perform honda the last year and it was because like literally I was trying to get on, or I was getting online. I won't say trying because right. I was with Delta, but I was trying to get on. I was getting online for Delta, and Bridget knew that I had to come home to get something that I needed for Delta. Right. Um, she knew where I was at, and the day before that, I had a whole car accident. She knew that. Mm. She knew that I had a car accident that same day too. Mm. So I had one accident going home because I fell asleep. I'd be falling asleep everywhere. And oh, remember that because I'm going to tell you why I'm <laughs> bringing it up. I got you. I either fell asleep or something and I like tapped somebody's car and I was just like, oh my God. Granted, it wasn't bad, right. but that was one thing. I was a little shook up about that because mm-hmm. of course I was scared I was going to get in trouble with my mama. Like, we still kids. I don't think right. people realize right. that. You still get in trouble with your yeah. mama. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, I still got in trouble for hitting this lady car. Granted, I ain't doing that for two But anyways, then after that, I was backing out and somebody was flying on campus and mm-hmm. hit my car. So, and then I still had to drive to Birmingham to go get this thing or this right. letter or whatever I needed for Delta. Bridget knew where I was at. She knew what was going on. And still, when I made it back, driving a million miles per hour to make it mm. to practice, I walk in the choir room, which is where we practice, walk in this room, and everybody's just looking at me. I'm just like, what is going on? This is not going to go well. Mm. You already feel it. You feel <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. This is yeah. not going to go well. And come to find out, this woman that made it seem like, I don't know what she said I was it, but anyway, she was just like, you need to go and see O, which is Dr. Oliver. Right. You need to go see O. So I'm like, okay, let me go see O, what's going on, Dr. Oliver. Um, I get down there, and he's like, Bridget said you don't know the routine. At this time, I'm like, wait, I made the routine up. What you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> wait. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> I said, that's what she, that's what she told you? Okay, you cute, Bridget. You cute for this one. And I won't say I made the routine up. We all collectively did. Right. This time, Tay was not there. Tay yeah, was, exactly. I don't remember where she was at. She, I think she had an audition or mm-hmm. something. This was before Tay wasn't like right. dancing with us. Mm-hmm. She had went to do something else. I don't know what it was, but she was going to fly or she flew in for Honda. And then they taught her the routine. Mm-hmm. So you mean to tell me you couldn't have taught me the routine? Exactly. Like, if you were, if you was being honest, and if I really didn't know the routine, what was the difference in teaching Tay and teaching me when I've been at practice all the other days exactly. of, outside of today? So I think it was Mitchell. It was Chelsea who even told me. She was like, yeah, Bridget didn't pack your shoes. And I'm like, okay, so this is going to go live. So not only did I drive to Birmingham, my ex at the time, he rode with well, my boyfriend at the time, which is my ex now, he rode with me to Birmingham, but oh, let him march. And I'm like, you ain't even have a reason for missing practice. You just missed right, practice. Right, exactly. So I was like, and I, I, like I said, my downfall was that I couldn't hold my tongue, mm-hmm. and I let them have it. Mm-hmm. And it, and it's always very respectful, but I'm like, no, I'm going to call a spade a spade. Like, this must be Bridget Banger. Like, because it couldn't be old band, because this don't make no sense. None mm-hmm. of this don't make no sense. So I was just like, okay. So I ended up falling out with them or whatever. And I was just like, hey, I'm just going to go on here and go home. And they was like, well, you can get on the bus. You can still come. You just can't dance. Who y'all think y'all? I've never been caked. You would not cake me today. Like, <laughs> and now you lying about too. Like, right. then you lying. Come on. Somebody, yeah. Somebody bring me my. That was the bull. 
I gotta go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, like that was just one of the experiences of, and then that didn't even make it worse. They, I mean, that's not even the worst part. They had me drive. They called me at four o'clock in the morning. Had me drive to Atlanta. Now I told y'all I fall asleep and I drive. Yeah. They had me drive to Atlanta by myself at four o'clock in the morning with the under the perception of, oh, you're gonna be able to dance now. I get all the way there, and I see Dr. Oliver on the elevator. He's like, why are you here? What? What you mean why I'm here? Because Bridget told me to come. Like, you ain't talked to Bridget? Mm. So this is some more bull. <laughs> okay, so y'all playing, with my, y'all playing with my emotions. Y'all spinning in my face. Mm. Okay, so I ended up, Bridget, going to Bridget's room, and she's talking to me, and she, I told you she does this thing where she's like nice. Mm-hmm. So she's been nice to me this one of these days now. Yeah. Um, and it's just like, okay, well, you fussing at me, you telling me all I had to do was this and this and this. I'm like, well, I did kind of let you know what I was at. You I told you when I was on my way, you knew. Um, and then she was just like, Oh, well, go on upstairs, go on get go on upstairs with your sisters. As if go get drinks. <laughs> like so I go upstairs, once again, I'm in Chelsea room now. Chelsea and them like What's going on? So they done had a whole run in. I won't say what they run in was. Yeah. Because that's not my business to tell. But I get up there and it's some more mess with somebody else. Oh, and I'm like, Jesus. he's telling me, I'm like, oh my God, this is what's going on. Then I get another call from Bridget and it's her telling me I'm not dancing. Mm. I'm like, you just told me. <laughs> and you and you literally just wasted your time coming, going from. And you and you put me in, in harm's way because I had to, um, like I said, I got on the road at like four. I don't think I made it there until like 10. Because mm. like I was sleepy. So I, no, nah, it probably was a little bit early now. It probably was like eight or nine, honestly. But I was just like sleepy. So I slept on the side of the road so many different times, like falling asleep. Mm. It was crazy. It was wow. crazy. It, it was just like, eventually I was like, you know what, I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to leave because y'all are getting on my nerves. And yeah. y'all not going to let me dance. And y'all making a fool of me. And y'all not going to keep making a fool of me. Like, right. It's not going to happen. Right. And that was like the last time I even cared to dance with them anymore. Damn. After that, I was so not even around. Because I was going to I was gonna ask you, like, <sighs> did you even have an opportunity to, to come back to be a fourth, you know, fourth rip? Thing. Um, you know, it's three years and out. The right. rule is three years and out. Um, I even had a conversation with Bridget again. Here we yeah. go. This is another nice day. This is after my Miss ASU rain or maybe during it, because I was y'all know I'm you know I'm in the military, so right. but she called me, I was in the woods, lost probably because I can't do land there. Oh Lord. But anyway, that's a whole other story. <laughs> but I'm somewhere in the woods and I'm on the phone with her, but I know I was practicing the land there. And throughout the conversation we talked for a good minute because me and Bridget have great conversations mm-hmm. too. She's a great person. Like, she's very smart. Like, she got, like, 60 million degrees. Mm. Like, yeah, yeah. like, she, she's something to be reckoned with, too. Mm-hmm. But we was on the phone. This was a good day. And we are on the phone talking. And eventually she was like, yeah, because I know you only went in, um, you only went and ran for Miss ASU because you didn't know I was gonna, if I was going to give you captain or not. And I said, you're right. That's exactly why I did it. Damn. What's your point? Because you kept playing with me. Like, yeah. Would, and she would pin us against each other. Like Damn. she'll tell, uh, uh, she'll tell Pricky something, and she'll turn around and tell me something different. And at that time, me and Pricky were like thick as thieves. Yeah. Oh my god, my phone just keep going off. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Um, let me put it on silent. <laughs> okay, so yeah, like literally, she would pin us against each other, and I'm just like, why would you? Why? Right. What's your rationale? Like, what's your point? Because that was like literally my best friend at the time. So why are you doing it? But anyways. Yeah, I I had the opportunity, I guess, but I didn't think I would get it. I, I don't shut up enough for her. I feel like she wants her captains or she wanted her captains to be somebody she could control. You yeah. can't control. And some a lot I'm of a lot of fans say that though. You're not yeah. the first person to ever say that. So I, I, I understand what you're what you're saying. So I get mm-hmm. it. I get it. Oh, it's so much mm-hmm. other stuff that I could say yeah. that I'm not that she might not even know that I know that I know about. Mm. And it's just like yeah, I'm, I'm think, uh, somebody told me, and I won't say who, she was just like, and it's somebody that's very high up, up among the chain of Bridges and Dr. Oliver's, that was like, you need to be thankful you didn't get captain, because yeah, it just wasn't going to go good for you. Yeah. Like, yeah. it really wasn't, so. And as, as hurtful that as bullet, that baby. was, I had to be okay with it, yeah. so. You missed that bullet, baby. Ooh. Yeah, mm, mm. I did. So going back to fresh being you being a freshman, how was it um, being on the team 
that was becoming so known and, and gaining so much exposure and and um just <clears throat> trying to see how I could put it. Gaining so much exposure due to social media. That's what I want to say. Um, well, you know, at that time we didn't realize it. Yeah. We didn't see that at all. I mean, I didn't and you know we had to delete or we were supposed to delete yeah. our social media. I was one of the goody two shoes that actually did like a fool. <laughs> um, my other sister did not do that. They didn't do that. Even to this day, like, I'm working to get the 10K. Like, yeah. that's going to be a thing when I finally get the 10K. Like, yeah. all the rest of the thing is probably like at 60 million. K right. <laughs> but yeah, like, I actually deleted my page. So I didn't really see a lot of things. I mean, you would get in trouble if your parents come in on the certain stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, my mama always come in on everything. I'm like, Mom, I get in trouble at practice when you come in. Like, mm. just don't. Like, yeah. it's lame that you get in trouble. Then I just turned yeah. off my notifications. Yeah. I thought I turned it off. Okay, try it again. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, like, so that was one of the downfalls of the social media era. Because, I mean, or that was one of the, the downs of it. But then you had this other side where it's like, oh, my God, you get to see yourself. Like, you get to actually see videos. I wasn't used to that. Like, in high school, mm. we didn't have great camera quality and right. stuff like that. So, to be able to look back, it's like, oh, my God, that's cool. And I'm probably, if I ever had some children, I'd be like, girl, come and look at my Right, this is me. My yeah. Because I was, yeah. <laughs> so, I think that that's a cool portion of being in that particular era. Like, I think that's really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's amazing. And then there is another downfall of them comments. Like, yeah. Mm. Between the comments, and I told you, I'm going to be honest, between mm, the comments ahead. and Brittany, I literally tried to jump out of towers. Like, that's how under how much stress I was under. Like, why are y'all dogging me out? Y'all don't realize that these are, as I keep saying, these are children. Yes. These are still humans. These are still, like, we not Beyonce. Right really not i mean nowadays i think that going in you're you're realizing it and it's probably putting y'all mind or the new newer girl's mind like hey this is a thing like you have to have thick enough skin to deal with this but i didn't at that time and then it was like you having all these other issues with the team it, it just is a lot yeah, yeah um but being able to like actually have the videos we used to actually have these things called spin guest sundays in my house mm. so my mom my sister and i we would always sit around and wait on um caleb to post his videos mm -hmm. and i had my tv mounted on my screen <laughs> and literally would pick out the things that i could do better the things mm -hmm. that i shouldn't have did the stuff i always used to mess something up yeah i ain't paying enough attention <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> but i used to get into the moves and after i'm dancing it's like girl you threw something else <laughs> right but yeah so that was a plus um to social media and like i said just being able to go back yeah and like you're literally all over the world yeah. like that's and, the cool and, it, and it's it. gonna be posted forever so forever. you, you forever. can just show anybody okay <laughs> yes so that was the cool part about it okay so, cool. so going into your second year as a sting at um what did you want to do differently from your first year not get busted Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a comment talking bad about me have more good things. Because right. I was co I was concerned at that time. Like I said, now when I perform, I don't care about a crowd. And that's because of the, the thick skin that Stingit has given me right. gradually. Right. Like I said, the first year, mm -mm, it was horrible. The second year, I'm like, okay, they're going to talk. Right. I see that. They're going to talk. So let me at least try to do better. Because, I mean, they're not wrong. It's just the fact of how you're saying it. You ain't got to come that hard. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to do better. I wanted to, um, I've never, I only been on the back row once. So that wasn't a thing. Um, and then the slot that I was in, that corner position. Right. According to Asia, me and Chelsea could never stand next to each other. Because oh, we were two individuals. Yeah. And because of that, it was like, no. So I didn't really, really want to have more camera time because I felt like I, I feel like I used to clown. Like mm -hmm. I have videos of myself that nobody has seen because mm -hmm. like it's hard for Caleb to film both sides at the same time. Exactly. So it's like, okay, I want it to be better. And then in my mind, I mean, I think I had just came back from Romania that year. So I just wanted to Baby, you was traveling. Okay. Yeah, because of military. Right. I had to go to uh that year. I think they did something. I can't even remember what it was. I just remember they was on a stage mm -hmm. uh, during the summertime. I don't remember. Anyway, I think I know what you're talking about. 
I think I, I, did. I didn't get to do big, but I was just like, yeah, I want to be more involved. I want to, you know, do a do a good job, and I just want to enjoy myself some more. Like mm-hmm. being that was my second year. That was a, a big deal. That yeah. first of all, I wanted to make the team back because it was a thing that okay. If you were on the team the year before, it's harder for you to make the team back than it is a freshman to come and take your spot. Right. That's just a known thing. And Bridget mm-hmm. used to drive that in our head. So for me to be able to get even on the team the second year was huge. Yeah. So I just wanted to enjoy it more. That was my goal, which kind of kind of happened. Yeah. yeah. Like, you, you got to keep dancing. Yeah. You got to keep performing. So, yeah. Mm. That was my thing. So now that you're an upper class, then like, who did you take under your wing if you could? I'm like, you know, because you know, Asia was, you know. <laughs> um, my little sister was Takara Johnson. Okay, and that's still my little sister. <laughs> um, she's in Miami now, but if she wasn't, we'd probably be thick as thieves running around <laughs> still. I loved her. I've always loved her. She's always been such. She's. She's everything to me. Yeah. Um, actually, me and Amber shared her as a little sister, mm. but I think she kind of clinged to me more, uh, just because like I was, I I used to try, I used to try to take her like to the black box mm-hmm. on Steve Gates Sundays. Now you're with my family, and we're watching us on the camera. Mm. We're trying to make it better because just as hard of a time as I had my freshman year, she had a worse time. Mm. Like. You was picked on more. You actually was caked up sometimes. So it was just like, I don't want that to happen to my little sister. So I used to try to help her out a lot. Um, but yeah, like she's she's my favorite in the whole world. <laughs> like she's amazing to me. So. Yes, ma'am. Um, what are some performance qualities you gain from being a stingit? Um, sex appeal, sex appeal, and some more that. Literally, I think that that's, that's the thing that I gained. Um, and eye contact. Yeah. Like, I love, I don't know if people know this, but I look down on a lot of the videos that people see. Mm. That's not because I'm looking down. That's because I'm looking at somebody, man, somebody's, whoever's it is. And so, like, I teach people that, like, your crowd, yeah, you you are being filmed, but your crowd that's in your presence right now is who you are giving yeah. the most attention to. Exactly. So, I used to try to do get in my show. She said, look at somebody. <laughs> yes, the diamond. That's what I'm doing. And it was so funny because I ain't gonna talk to none of y'all in real life, but right. you're gonna get this. Yeah. You're gonna get this vibe. You gonna, you, like, yeah, you're gonna get the aura. You're gonna get everything up. You're gonna, you're gonna get all everything. of it, literally. So, yeah. yeah. That was my thing. I think I learned. Um, and I think it's very important now, even when I look back, um, I try to tell people, like, you have to keep your endurance up. Mm-hmm have to do that i also think from something i've learned and not necessarily what i learned when i was there Mm -hmm. my stretching i never stretch Mm. ever 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 and as i'm an old lady now that's important yes i didn't realize how important it was um and you can actually see a lot of in my performances i may not have hit the split the way i should have because i wasn't stretching like i wasn't doing what i needed to do i feel Mm. like that's something on my end that I should have been doing, but I was not. So, yeah. That's important. Stretching that's is a, important. Oof. It's very important. Yeah. Like, oh, my God. And I, I try to instill that into my girls now. Like, y'all got to stretch. Mm-hmm. Y'all got to. Because now that I am stretching, when I come up with this field show, I don't care that you ain't stretched. Because I told you, you should have been stretching. So, Bing- bingo. <laughs> <laughs> like, you got to get You got to get into it. So, yeah. I think, yeah, those are my two things. Yes. So, how was your bond with your 14 sisters? All I three years. It. All three years. Okay, so I loved them my first year. Like, we was thick as thieves. Like, you didn't see one of us without all of us. Yeah. Like, that was, for one, it was a requirement. I remember <laughs> Angel was playing about that. We your sister. Oh. We your sister. <laughs> we your sister. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, like she she really made sure that we was like really um, close knit, and honestly, we had to have each other because we all going through this, and don't nobody else understand it. Then they were big on not talking about what was going on. Mm-hmm. Like I remember, I even got in trouble one time because they swore up and down I was talking to somebody on the phone when it was actually my mom, mm-hmm. and I'm sitting in the which was dumb of me, but I was sitting in the admissions office, I believe, and I was on the phone with my mom, and I was venting. Mm-hmm. I got in trouble because oh, somebody overheard my conversation. 
conversation and they said I was cussing. I was like, no, I know I wasn't cussing because I was on the phone with my mom. Exactly. So, yeah. But y'all lied on me. But I was talking about y'all. I, <laughs> on me, I was talking about y'all. I just was. And I was so bold. I, I told her one time, I said, actually, that's not even all I said. Mm. <laughs> That ain't even it. But yeah, my sisters, we were like really, really close knit at that time. Now, as the years kept going, we kind of not necessarily fell out, but we did disperse a little mm-hmm. bit. We separated a little bit more because everybody didn't make the team back. So, yeah, whereas we had this thing to bind us together and we had this stuff to talk about, now you're an outsider. Now yeah. it's kind of like I'm not supposed to be telling you what's going on within the four walls, as they call it. Like, right not supposed to tell you so yeah like gradually we kind of separated a little bit um but in the beginning like i said man pricky that was my yeah. ace boom boom i love me some pricky um i love me some destiny jones yeah loved her loved her loved her like she was like a big sister um and then chelsea chelsea <laughs> chelsea. chelsea just chelsea yeah but yeah, I, I love them. And I think of all of them, I don't talk to anybody now. I'm a loner. Yeah. Like, so when I say this, it's not because we, we don't get along. It's because I really just, I be by myself for mm-hmm. real. Um, but I think out of everybody, I may talk to Chelsea more so than anybody. And that's very, very seldom yeah. as well. Like, yeah. it's very, very, very seldom. So. Mm, mm. So how was it um, dancing under Tay in 2016? What was the difference between Asia and Tay? Okay, before I answer this question, um, I'm going to remind you of what I said about Asia, okay. about how people grow. Mm-hmm. Okay, So I did not really like Dancing Under Tate at first because it felt like she used to show favoritism to uh, Courtney because that was her sister. Right. And I was like, yo, like, all us five, like, you ain't got to, or their way, because that was her craft sister, they're, the things that Asia may have taught us one way, she may have changed it mm-hmm. to something else. And yeah. I'm very voiceful. So, and and like I said, I, I probably needed to have come a little step down a little bit. So, that was a thing. But, um, overall, it wasn't horrible at all. I think it was just like a lot of drama sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was just a lot of drama. But it, it ended up being a good year for me. I yeah. guess. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was it was different. And see, Tay was my, I was a dance minor at one point. Mm-hmm. Tay was my big sister in the dance department mm. as well. So, but we didn't really talk as much, but I feel like I kind of had a relationship with her already. So I already had like a, a found respect for her. Kind of like I had a respect for Asia as mm-hmm. well. But just because I got respect, that don't mean I, I like everything you do. So. That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> How was it leading one of the biggest performances um, in history for MCC? Oh, <laughs> child. It was amazing. It was amazing. That was like the best, the best thing ever. Um, oh my gosh, I was at home. You know, yeah. I mean, I, I don't. I think I can count on my hand how many Magic City classes I have not been in since I've been born. Like, right. so to be able to perform at a Magic City classic is like. Yeah. Oh, girl, look at the units. <laughs> and now you get to lead a Magic City Classic for yes. the Alabama State University. These thing is, it's like, yeah. it, you, you can take me off my, my high horse. <laughs> you can take me off of it if you push that horse over. Like, <laughs> I was still going to be up there. Yeah, <laughs> yes. So, yeah, it was amazing. It was definitely amazing. It was a great experience. So, did you feel like you had to step up as a leader in 2016 due to the circumstances? Um, honestly, not really. Uh, I wasn't allowed to really step up. And then okay. on top of that, it's like, it's like, um, when you already are who you are, you don't have to change. You know how they say, uh, when you, if you're ready, you don't have to get ready. Right. It was kind of one of those things. I already was, well, I already was saying whatever I wanted to say. So it wasn't much more that I could do. And then even with the circumstances, just because I had ran for captain that year, they didn't put me in a place of, oh, you're going to be the one that's going to be in the line of succession or something like that. It was right. like, uh, y'all three, y'all all do this. Mm-hmm. It was like, mm-hmm. oh, well, if it's all of us, then I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, and I'm going to just have the luxury of being able to throw counts. Right. Because that's all that, that was, was yeah. you getting to throw counts. Um, yeah, so I don't feel like we had to really step up. I think everybody just continued on with their normal yeah. mm. day to day. Mm, mm. So how was it having Asia come back um, for the Maniac routine? 
Because, baby, let me tell you something. That routine was sickening. Mm. It was. That was sickening. It was amazing. Yeah. Like, Oh my gosh, like I said, the evolution of Asia. The yeah. evolution of Asia. You know what? I need to, she needs a shirt to say that. <laughs> Asia came back and she did the maniac routine. And it was great. Like, it was a fun experience. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember her telling me, she was like, you you look like an individual. Or you, she was like, you're being an individual. I was like, ooh, like you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was so sick of you. <laughs> and she was, she couldn't do that with Lance walk out. I was like, right. Y'all really had some good field shows because y- y'all had Get It Baby, Mania. Y'all had some good field shows. Yeah, Get It Baby was one of my faves, though. Yeah. Yeah. Get It Baby was one of my faves. So how do you, um, what was your inspiration behind, like, you know, doing the stands with so much dramatic and, 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 um, as far as, like, the poses, too. Like, when you, when you do the poses, you just give a little, mm, like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's kind of twofold. We're going to start with that pose. That pose is because my other pose the last time was ugly. So I wasn't getting up this time. I was like, you know what? I don't got nothing. I don't got nothing. I don't got no pose. So I'm going to sit here. Um, and the drama behind my dancing is because I'm dramatic. Like, yeah. my friend um, was actually, like, well, she was talking to me. She was like, yeah, you're just so dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm into theater. I mean, I, I write poems. I write books and movies and stuff so like that's me so Mm -hmm. I dance off of my personality and my mom used to tell me in high school like this is a character like when you're dancing you are literally in character so you can be whoever you want to be exactly literally so in my mind that's who I am like oh okay we we dancing and we supposed to look like dolls because we're we're kind of What's a good word? We're imitating the dolls. Oh, well, I'm be a doll today. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. This is, you want me to dance like this? Or you, this is, this is the vibe you want me to give off? Okay, I'm going to embody this person that you're trying to persuade or you're trying to get me to be. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like, it's, I love the drama. I love the dramatics of everything. Yes, like, baby. So. Let me tell you something. The poses, you was giving it. <laughs> <laughs> you were giving it. Um, so what was the inspiration on bringing the, that legendary, um, uniform back for Turkey Day Classic? That was a legendary uniform. Um, okay, so I'm not a big know-it-all about the uniforms, to be honest, but I want to say, if I'm not mistaken, there was, like, a Bridget thing she mm-hmm. likes to bring back or to, like, um, I guess pay homage yeah. to the older, uh, Stingette lines, and so each year, I think that's her, that was her thing, or her plan was to bring back a uniform uh i think that it was 10 years is it 10 years before i think, I think so i think it's like every 10 every uh the 10th year before so if it's 2021 now it'll be what 11 right so, you know and like it'll be 11 um you would do a uniform from that year hmm. i think that that was her her goal behind those uniforms hmm. or the next uh, the turkey day uniform since it is homecoming right so. right right um <clears throat> did you ever want to be captain Yes, I did. I actually uh, posted my captain letter recently. Uh, mm-hmm. Somebody else asked about it. I was like, yeah, I ran for captain. Um, I did want to be captain. I definitely did. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. So, like, if you were to get captain, like, what what do you think you would have, like, implemented with this thing yet? Well, I know my first field show um, literally would have been what I did for my coordination, which was the burlesque thing. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I'm into the dramas and the dramatics of it. Yeah. And I feel like, why not bring drama to the field like yeah. give them it's, you got a minute and 30 seconds to wow the audience mm-hmm. and that's anything 
um, in high school, we did a lot of theme shows. And I'm not saying, like, oh, we put on a costume. I mean, like, it's a song. You you embody that song. Mm-hmm. How you're saying, like, oh, you're dramatic. Do that drama. Give that drama as a whole. Um, I think I would have did a lot more of finding out who each dancer was. Mm-hmm. Like, right now, in Miles, I don't want you just to try to be me. I want you to try to be you because... If you try to be me, you can never do that. Like, Mm -hmm. you can never, but you can always be you, and you can be the best you. So I'm big on that. And also implementing everybody's gifts. Like, you made the team for a reason. Like, it's something in you that everybody else does not have. Right. So whether you was good at hip-hop or whether you're good at ballet or whether whatever it is, like, let you come to the team and you bring your gift. Um, I'm just a really good manager. So as far as being a captain, I feel like it's important for you to be a good manager as well. And good managers know how to make their workers feel good. Mm-hmm. And you do that by giving them something to do and delegating and making them feel like, oh, okay, well, you're good at stretching, so you're going to lead the stretches today. Mm-hmm. Like, that was my thing. And I also really wanted us to get more into community service. I feel like for example, Beyonce has a platform. It would be it would be beneath her not to use her platform for some type of good. Right. Whether it's the stuff that her and Jay Jay Z do in like Africa or whatever it is. But I feel like we have a big platform as well. Mm-hmm. And our grades like were so top notch. Like I know I know for sure Amber always had like a four point mm. I had I think I graduated with like a three six and it was because I was fooling off at the end. Mm-hmm. So I'm just saying, like, all of our grades were, like, really, really good. So I felt like us going and mentoring kids, like, in a community. Oh, that would be good. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. showing them, like, hey, yeah, we do all of this, and but we still got great and, grades. And, and be an inspiration. Yeah. Literally. Because you already are. So at right. least use this platform for something good because kids need to see that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes kids, like, I got a... I, I sub at uh, my old high school. I had a girl recently to tell me, man, she just told me some crazy stuff. And I'm like, who is your inspiration? Like, obviously, you yeah. don't have a role model in your life. So it's just like, okay, well, let me help you because your goals aren't even a good enough goal. Mm. Like, that don't even sound like something you should want to do. Right. So I feel like if you have a dance team or anybody that's of any type of inspiration to you coming back to you and let you know like hey well this is what i do and Mm -hmm. this is why i do it that makes you want to do better in your own life so i felt like we could have definitely embarked upon that and really went and and i told them that i told um dr oliver that like all of i don't know if everybody turned in the capital letter but all of that was in my capital letter like no we need Mm. to do more like we owe it to the community to do more (laughs) exactly and you know it's really important what you said as far as um you know, understanding each dancer because a lot of people, a lot of captains don't understand each dancer because every dancer can't do the same thing. You get no. what I'm saying? So I, 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 under, I understand what you're, what you're saying right there. Um, yeah. how did it feel being a fan favorite? Was it a lot of pressure on you? Um, I never looked at myself as being a fan favorite until I got the job at Miles mm. and here in my captain now she was like yeah i used to watch you in high school mm. but, uh, <laughs> like yeah we used to sit around and watch you like you don't even understand it's a big deal that you're my coach like we've always liked you and i'm mm. like oh wow in my mind i mean you can have a million people say good things about you and then in one bad come and make you feel like oh yeah you are at the bottom of the totem pole so i feel like i was dealing with a lot of that at that time like mm-hmm. i was like seriously dealing with that so i didn't notice that i was a fan favorite and even even being a fan favorite, like, you got people like Tasha in the video screaming, like, <laughs> it don't count. Like, I love Tasha, but that's my Tasha. Like, yeah. of course you're going to scream for me. Like, I would scream for you or my sister. Like, that's who I felt like was screaming for me. I felt like Birmingham was screaming for me. Yeah. I didn't feel like the fans were screaming for me, if that yeah. makes sense. Like, I, got you. I feel like I had so much love from Birmingham that that's what that was the people that liked me so much. So I didn't never see that. Oh, it's people outside of Birmingham that really like you. Like, mm. I never really realized that until literally being her coach. And she's wow. like, no, like, we loved you. Wow. So, mm. Mm. so what is your take on the newer thing is? We'll start off on a good note. So, on a good note, they are so, so, so talented. Yes. It's, it's like, 
I wouldn't have made the team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I wouldn't have made the team. You would have made um, it now. <laughs> they're amazing yeah. um, their talent is so impeccable um, but I don't really feel like they look like singers to me they kind of look like little kids to me sometimes um, yeah. some of them do look like more adultish but a lot of them look like kids yeah. I don't know I don't know what it is I don't know if maybe the style is just changing over the years or honestly I feel like they haven't been really taught to be to me, a thing at is Asia Martin. So if you all dance or you ain't doing the stuff that Asia taught us, then to me, you're not really looking like a thing Yeah. So I could be completely wrong about if they look like thing and maybe that was just the Asia era of thing But to me, they look more like kids to me. They don't look like... Like the sexy and the, yeah. the swag. I got and some you. of them do. Yeah, like, some of them do. Wrong, some of them are bi. Yeah. And some of them have it, but... It's not a collective. It's not yeah. all of them. It's really not. Even the way they do certain counts and the way, like, they don't flow. Yeah. Like, it just don't, it ain't, it's sexy to me. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's kitty. I got you. I got you. Um, so how was it crossing with your captain, um, uh, 2016 captain, your crab sister? Like, how was that? Ooh. So, for one, my line name is M.I.A. Okay. <laughs> So I was definitely in my age. Okay. A uh, whole lot of times um, because I was running for Miss ASU at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I really didn't get to spend as much right. time as I probably should have with everybody. Um, but of course, I did the things that were needed to do to cross. But outside of that, I feel like I didn't even have the time to bond and experience that that portion. Right. One part about it that made me just. Uh, I felt that, mm -hmm. though, the moment I felt that, oh, my God, it's my captain. It's my, so it's all the thing it's. Yeah. It's all, of, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, was, it was on our probate day. Mm -hmm. And just to see, like, oh, my gosh, this is us. Yeah. Like, all of us. Like, we fine. Like, yeah. this is so cool. It was very cool. And I feel like it even made us have a different bond. I feel like that, that's what I mean, like, about, that was another time of meeting Asia. Mm -hmm. Not meeting her, but, like, that's a new Asia. That's yeah. a whole nother Asia. That's a whole nother Tay. That's a whole nother Chelsea. That's a whole nother Talia. Like, mm. we are not in these four walls no more. We're yeah. a whole nother people. Like, it's different now. And it, it felt good. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, felt, it was good and we were able to be our own individual selves and almost get to know each other differently. Mm. Mm. That's so, you like are that. deep. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I am, honestly. <laughs> So what made you want to become Miss Alabama State University, honey? And how was your experience? Uh, as being Miss ASU? Um, so like I said earlier, I was a dance minor at one point. Mm -hmm. When I was a dance minor, Mr. Kevin Grant, rest his soul, he gave us a job to do or a, an, an assignment. I want to say it was like a five-year or four-year plan. Mm -hmm. A part of my four-year plan was to make sure I wrote down all the different goals, like in every month, what you want to accomplish in this month. And so I wrote down that I wanted to be Miss ASU when I was a freshman. Mm -hmm. um, I was a freshman. I was like, either I want to be Miss ASU or I want to be the SGA president, whichever one had the least amount of rules, Right. literally. <laughs> and I was like, whichever one got the least amount of rules, and I get to do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And so coming up on that last year as being a stinkhead and having that bad taste in my mouth, it was just like, okay, it's time for me to check out almost. Yeah. And it was honestly at Honda because after I left from Honda, uh, my my friend, she had a birthday celebration that next day. So mm. the plan originally was supposed to be to go to Honda and then try to find a way to sneak off the bus right. to stay in Atlanta. Oh, for yeah. my birthday. <laughs> so that was my plan anyway. Yeah. Or either that or just drive back to Atlanta. Yeah. Um, and so when I got stuck in Atlanta and I didn't have anywhere to stay because our hotel reservations were for the next day mm -hmm. and not that day, I ended up going to stay with Orlando, which is a guy who um, has done so much for me. Um, he used to make our uniforms. He was real close with, or I don't know their relationship now, but he was really close with Bridget at the time. And he ended up letting me stay in his hotel room. Mm -hmm. When I stayed in his hotel room, he introduced me, and I told him all what happened. He introduced me to London legend. Mm -hmm. 
London Legend became my campaign manager. Okay. And the rest was history. Ooh. Um, literally, I got that was my first time ever talking to London that night. I told him all the stuff that was going on. He was like, "Oh, that's okay, Queen, because you're gonna win." Yes. <laughs> and I think I was his eighth queen that mm. morning. Wow. So he knew what he was doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and. I went in knowing that, okay, I had to have a platform. And like you said, I'm already deep. So yeah. all I had to do was figure out what is it that I want. So I I went off of my platform. I learned my, I made a platform. I had got into Elite that year. Mm-hmm. And it was just like I had so much support, so much new support. People yeah. I didn't even know, like, and they took me in and showed me so much love. Like, mm. they taught me. That was when I learned how to do my makeup. That was when I learned how to dress. That was when... It just yeah. it just changed at that moment. Like so much happened for me. Um, and as Miss Edge, my experience, honestly, it was it was just as up and down as being a singer, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. Um, because I started to realize that Alabama State is so much about politics. Yeah. Like it is so much about politics and whew, I don't even know how to explain that. Like you have to know who you know and mm-hmm. you have to fall in good with this person, not fall in good. And I don't play those games. Mm-hmm. And so me being the eyeball, sometimes it was really, really good for me because I was able to be a voice for the students. Mm-hmm. And I always did speak up. I tried my best to speak up. And, and I even felt like sometimes I didn't do enough, but I did as much as I could or as much as I was allowed to do. So yeah. I think I, I end up having a wonderful reign um, as I look back. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know. So how does it feel like seeing, you know, Yasmin, you know, being captain and, you know, being now Miss ASU? Like, how does it, how do you, how does it feel? Oh my gosh, it feels amazing because I remember her first day at LRM State. Um, I remember talking to her and I was telling her, she was like, oh yeah, I'm from uh, Baton Rouge, mm-hmm. the, the top of the boot, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes. And she was just telling me uh, she just came from this school and she's transferring and all of these different things. And she was just saying, like, I'm going to audition for the Stingets. And me knowing that don't nobody make Stingets. Yeah. Like, my whole thing was to anybody was uh, at that time was, yes, that God will give you three answers. Yes, not yet, and it's something greater. Mm. And so I told her, I said, one way or the other, if you make that team or you don't make that team, yes, not yet, and it's something greater. Don't you give up? And you just remember that at the end of the day, you just got to be in God's will. Mm. So I told her that. And I'm not saying that I thought, I, didn't, I had never seen her dance, nothing. So I didn't know if she was going to make the team, but she wasn't. And like I said, that was something I was saying in my speeches for everybody, because I really meant that, like, because I didn't get captain. Right. God didn't tell me no. He told me, yes, yeah, not yet, or something greater. And my Miss ASU was my something greater. Mm. And I always told people that, like, it's always something greater. When he gives, when you think it's a no, it's no, it's, it's not a no, it's a not yet. Like, mm. you're going to do something else. Like, yeah. So, and I was even telling her, like, some of my sisters didn't make the singing team the first time, but they made it the next time. So, that wasn't a no, but not yet. You know mm, what I mean? So, right. I was just telling her to always remember that and not to give up. So, now to see that this girl ain't not just give up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what you gonna do next, year? What's next? Period. And, and when she wrote with me and told me she was gonna run for Miss ASU, I was just like, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. We, we, we talk about it, but just do it. It's done. Yeah, it's done. And I and I and I see her stubbornness. It's really interesting mm-hmm. because she's also a Delta. So one of my sisters is really really close to her, mm-hmm. and um, their relationship is so funny. They, the falling out, the, but it's like the love. It's like a, a a big sister and a little sister right type of relationship. And it's just like Yasmin does what she wants to do. Yeah. Period. She don't. You can tell Yasmin to do one thing, but Yasmin's gonna do what Yasmin mm-hmm. wants to do, and I love it. I, I definitely love it, yeah. and I respect it so much. I um, I'm just so proud of her. And honestly, like now, I may say, okay, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna drop this hoodie, yes. You are uh, wear my hoodie. And she be like, yeah, send it to me. Yeah. I ain't send her the first hoodie, <laughs> but still, it's just the principle <laughs> of how much support she's willing to give. Like yeah. my dance classes, everything, like. And I love that. And that support, I it's reciprocated. Like, I give her that same resp- support back. Mm. I'm definitely proud of her. Yes, like, ma'am. I love it. Yes, and she going to, like I said, it don't matter if I think that she needs to move this way or that way, baby. She going to do what she doesn't want to do. She going <laughs> to so, do it. <laughs> she going to do it. And I love it. And I, I definitely love it. Yeah.
again. So we're going to go ahead and go into fan questions, okay? Okay. I have a question from Marcus Wright. He said, um, how did it feel juggling being a stingette and being in the military? Um, it was not the easiest thing, to mm-hmm. be honest. It was not. Um, the band don't care that you're in the Army. Mm-hmm. They don't care. We used to get out of practice. It didn't matter if it was 12 going on 1 o'clock. And I still had to get up the next morning at 6 to go to PT. Mm. Um, and that was very hard. And I used to have the nastiest attitude, actually. Um, like I said, I did not hold my phone. It's probably something I could have worked on. I was ready to go. Like, it, sometimes it, it used to feel like we was wasting time at practice. And I get the principle of, y'all don't have nothing to do. I got something to do. Like, <laughs> yeah. And I got homework. Yeah. And I'm not just in the military. I've been in the military since I got out of high school. But I also was in ROTC at the same time. So I had two sets of military obligations. So it was crazy. Mm. It was definitely crazy. But it was worth it. I even want to say um, when I became Miss ASU or when I was running for Miss ASU, I felt like God was telling me it's all or nothing. Because I wanted to quit. I wanted to just do one thing. Right. And I, in my life, I always want to just do one thing. And I'm not a one thing type of person. Like right. I juggle so much at the same time, and it all intertwined together. And it, it felt like I was I was hearing him say, like, literally, you are gonna do all or nothing. It's all or nothing. You are gonna be a singer. You gonna be in the army, and you are gonna do this because I feel like that was how I made. That's how a woman say it's you. It was because I got all this stuff behind my name. Like, why wouldn't you want me to be right. your queen? Like, exactly. I am. Anything you want me to be, I am her, like, mm. literally, right now. Mm. So, it was definitely a challenge. Um, I used to get in trouble a lot of times mm. because I was half doing, I even want to say, um, the extra of dating, I probably shouldn't have been dating. I think that that was a little extra time that was a waste of time, almost. Like, if I wouldn't have been doing that, I probably would have had more time to focus on stretching or to mm-hmm. focus on being a better singer or focus on being better in the military, like, I wouldn't have had that extra time. But you know, when yeah. you date, you want to be always somebody. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, I feel like that was my downfall. It would have been even better if I would have just been focused on what was required of mm-hmm. me, not the extra stuff. Mm. But mm. Okay. I have a question from Ashley Chambers. If you can go back to your crab year, what advice would you give your younger self? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Ain't nobody ask you. <laughs> Yeah. You don't have to speak up. I remember they used to sweat up and down. I was the snitch of the band. Oh, no. I'm like, yo, I swear to God, I ain't even said them folks. <laughs> they told me I snitched on, um, you know how people pledge their sex. They told me I snitched on them. They told me I oh, wrote Lord. some stupid letter about TBS. They told me I, I did something else. Um, It was a guy. What's his name? I can't even think of his name. He said that I told Dr. Oliver that, um, he said, I told Dr. Oliver that he was talking about the stingets and the and the dolls. I was like, I didn't do nothing. I was the reason he couldn't do Honda. I said, I did not say none of this stuff that y'all keep saying I said. Oh, and then the I be saying off the wall stuff. <laughs> so I was like, it's not even worth you lying on me. If you tell the truth, it's still, I'm still going to get in trouble if you just tell the truth. Like, yeah. I yeah. But like, seriously, if, I feel like people used to pick at me because I was so voiceful. And mm. they did assume, like, okay, if anybody did snitch, it was her. But I really didn't. Like, I remember one day I told them in the band room, I said, I, I told my freshman class, I said, if it ain't got, what did I say? If it ain't got three Greek letters, two colors, and one national, I ain't doing it. Bitch, it down there. Why did I tell them they ain't going to turn it? <laughs> From this, that point on, they swore me down. I snitched on everybody. Oh, and Lord. I said, bro, sometimes when they used to say I was snitching, I'm like, actually, no. Like, I remember they said I snitched on the trumpet section. I was like, bro, I talked to the boy that's over the trumpet section. Yeah. The night y'all don't got shot, it's because I talked to him. Chill out. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> snitching on y'all. <laughs> Why do y'all pick at me? Oh, oh my Lord. God. <laughs> I used to wake up. I used to have morning classes when I was a freshman, too, as a, a dance major. Mm-hmm. And so after my morning class, I would go back and go to sleep. Um, I would wake up some days and have so many messages mm. talking about Stamin, you like, what did you do? What did, you did this? I'm like, yo, I swear to God, I've been asleep. <laughs> I've been asleep. Why do y'all think it was me? Like, <laughs> leave, was me leave me alone. Leave me alone. I'm telling you, I told y'all I tried to jump out of town. Oh, now Lord. it's funny when I look back. 
yeah. when, I look, when I look back, it's so funny. But I know it was probably because I talked too much. Like, maybe they picked up me because I was too voiceful. But at the same time, I don't know. I feel like that's who I am. And because I am a spokesperson a lot of times for the rights, for the justice, that's a good thing to me. So yeah. it's, it's, a, it's even hard to say, maybe I would tell my younger, younger self to go stretch somewhere and shut up. <laughs> go stretch and shut up. Oh, Lord. Go write down what you want to say. <laughs> my mom used to tell me, oh, when I had an attitude with her, she was like, don't. Or me and her would get into it. She was like, go write it down. Write it down and slide it under my door. Because if you get smart with me, I'm like, <laughs> that's what I should have been doing. Maybe I should have just been writing it down. <laughs> Lord. It down. So I have a question from Robert Thomas. What advice would you give somebody that wants to become a queen of any HBCU? Um, Figure out why. Why do you, what is it about being a queen? Is it the crown that you want? Because you can go buy one of them from the store. Right. Um, it, it, that's not what a queen is. To me, like, you have to want to want good for the people that are around you. If you are the queen of a university, you're about to be the face of a university. And right. that's not an easy task. Like, every little thing you do reflects a whole university. And that's huge. Um, my platform, my platform was giving more self. Um, so it was serving and oh yeah, giving more self. So self still it for serving and empowering lives forever. I just went okay. the military. Um, so my service aspect came from that military thing. Um, I'll be in the military for what eight years as of Valentine's Day. Mm. So that was huge for me. Like I wanted us to give back as much as we could. The empowerment portion for me was the fact that I was bullied like a little bit when I was younger. So I didn't want other people to be bullied and I wanted to help them to get their self-confidence better. Right. Um, life or living was about having fun on campus and forever was about bridging the gap between uh, past and present ASU. So mm. that was my platform and I wanted to give more of myself to the campus. Right. So for me, I feel like that was an amazing platform for myself. Because even right now, my clothing brand is selfish. Uh, it's it's literally what I have lived off of. So mm -hmm. I feel like if your platform can't be taken afterwards, then you're really not trying to do something that is helpful to everybody. Exactly. You, know, personally. you always want to still try to find find a team, find somebody who believes in you, and that's not going to lie to you. Like They're not going to tell you, like, oh, that sounds good, and when it really don't. like You need somebody that's going to tear you apart because mm -hmm. otherwise everybody else will. Exactly. So literally, like I had Craig. Craig, I remember my very first time giving my speech. Um Craig Buckingham. He was my <laughs> hairstylist. He was my secretary. He was my friend. He was everything for me. And yeah. I was so appreciative of him. Like, oh my gosh, I was so appreciative of him. Of him. And granted, I had other people that helped me. Like, Yvonne Patterson helped me. Um, Zachary Allen, when he was my friend, he mm -hmm. helped me. Like, literally, so many people helped me, but it was just like, I needed so much more. I needed uh, to have a structured team, and exactly. I did not have that. Um, I did not after so long it was really just me and Craig literally mm. Mm. and so that became hard and then you have to make sure that you are re willing to ready to deal with the politics of your university like like I said it was one thing I, I used to always say it's one thing to be on one side of the campus but to come on this side mm. is a whole other story so you have to be ready for whatever they have because they already got a thought process in their mind of who they want to be exactly. this head or whoever they want to be the queen or what they want see as the queen so are you going to be able to stand in those shoes and are you going to be able to still find a way to be voiceful enough to push your platform as well as uh doing what the university needs you to do mm. so you have to be able to put yourself to the side a lot of times and still do what they want you to do um, yeah that's true yeah mm. i would i would definitely tell them to get a platform study your platform know your platform like to this day you see how i just speak my platform mm -hmm. like at you gotta know time, it. I, I was able to speak it. Mm -hmm. And that was what made Craig want to work with me. He was like, you knew that. Mm. You knew that. Like, yeah. And I did that for the first time in front of all of my uh, crab sisters and brother that was in Elite. And it was just like, yeah, we're going to vote for her. Mm. Like, That's we're going to vote for her. So, yeah. <laughs> That's some good advice because the girls need it, okay? The girls yes. definitely need it. I got to hey, get your hair done. Oh. oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Find some hair done and make up artists. Find how learn to walk in some heels. Okay. Yes. I'm going to stop reading the girls. Yes, yes, I'm yes. I'm going to stop reading the girls. Read them, Be a queen before you win. Okay. <laughs> yes. I have a question from James Parker. He said, what sting it counts did you make up? Um, I actually, there are no sting it counts in the book that I made up. Okay. Um, 
when I was a senior, you weren't allowed to make up counts. Okay. So, yeah, I can I can come up with stuff in my sleep, but you weren't allowed to. And the first time Asia even let somebody make up counts, I was not there. Um, my uncle had passed, and I had went home for a funeral or something, whatever I came home for dealing with the funeral. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I missed that opportunity. Mm. But when Classic came, 2016, you see me do... Uh, two counts that I did make up myself. Somebody calls it like the Fuji count or something. I mm-hmm. think that that's what they started calling it. I was like, okay. Mm. I didn't even realize that was the name of the song. So. <laughs> <laughs> if that's what y'all want to call it. Okay. Um, but um, I, I think it was two counts. So those two counts were my counts. Um, but I don't have any counts in the book that they still do. I think that hmm, recently one of the thing is learned my account and mm-hmm. did a and posted it on her story or posted it on her page. Who was it? And I really like her. I can't even think of her name. Jesus Christ, I can't think of her name. But yeah, it's gonna come to me as soon as this thing is over. Probably. As as I, yep. <laughs> but yeah, I don't have any kids. Okay. So we're gonna go into fast pass. So fast pass, okay. I say this or that and then you just have to like you gotta go fast. You gotta choose. You gotta choose what you want. Okay. 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 I'm a little slow though. I'm so, <laughs> so the first one is top three uniform. Go oh, ahead. I thought you was gonna give them. To well, me. it's some of them like that. Some of them okay, are. Okay. You know. Um. Oof. No, no. Uh, oh. I got one. <laughs> go ahead. I just got one. I'm sorry. Go. And it's the recent one that Courtney Scott just made. Ooh, yeah, yeah. The, the white one? Period. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's my favorite uniform. Yes, you got it. Okay, least favorite, all of them. <laughs> I got burnt and classic, so that one. Okay. When I was, but it was cute. It was cute when we put it on. It just, I didn't used to like how uh, we used to get them made on the bus. Yeah. But on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. glide or the print? Difference. Which one is which? <sighs> this I like this. Which is this? Yeah, that's the glide. That one. Okay. Okay. What's the prince then? The prince. I don't. I don't know. I haven't seen it. I got that question from Chris. <laughs> I haven't seen it. But yes, I love the glide. Um, fast, medium, or slow songs. Slow songs. Let me give you some life. Oh. <laughs> Favorite field show. Um, she came to give it to you the second one when okay. all of us performed. Yes. Um, favorite song in the stands? Uh, the old school song, Five on it. No, there's not Five on it. Last two dollars. Okay, yes. Jazz yeah. boots or character heels? Jazz boots on the field. Okay. Um, hair down, ponytail? Hair down. Okay. Labor Day Classic or tur- Turkey Day Classic? Labor Day or Turkey Day? Turkey Day. Okay. And last one, leading or following? Leading. Period. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. I get to do what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a few more questions, and this is regarding to being a coach now. Okay. Okay, so we know that you are a coach for the Golden Stars. What made you want to become a coach? Um, Let's see. The opportunity presented itself. So I was actually a coach at a high school already. I was helping out in my old high school. Um, but if for some that don't know, the band director that's over Miles was actually my band director in high school. Mm. So he was like, you you home? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it was kind of like one of them things. Mm. I'm trying to get his son out of my face. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. So um, what would you say is the difference between being on a team like this thing is and being a coach? Um, I am able to make sure that the things that I did not like never happened to my girls right so that is like the biggest thing yeah and i'm able to mentor them and and help them to be better people versus just being a good dancer if Mm. that makes sense Mm. okay okay so like what is your experience now like being that you know we have covid and like how is it for you oh it's it's very difficult to or yeah, it's very difficult to, to make things happen and yeah. to make them still be motivated, you know, to want to keep going and doing stuff when there's no opportunities right now. Right. Even this time to, like, recruit, for example. But who wants to go to college when it's COVID? Like, are, am I really going to dance? Right. And it's, it's sad to look in their faces and say, hey, it may not be no semester. Mm. Like, you don't want to say that. And it's my 
some of these girls stay last year. Like, yeah. Um, but honestly, at the same time, on the flip side, I do videos. So it's a blessing that I'm able to do videography for them because they're getting more exposure than they've ever gotten. And they're getting good exposure and not people talking bad about them. Right. They also have had that same experience of, oh, we getting dogged out and stuff yeah. like that. So I make sure that doesn't happen to them. Um, so COVID has been a blessing and a curse at the same time. I've been able to really work with them or last semester I was able to do a lot more work with them than now because mm-hmm. uh, I don't even think they're back in school like physically yeah the kids not here they still at home taking online classes so mm. that's kind of messed up um but yeah that's been the hugest thing but at the same time it's giving them time to really build a new foundation right right literally mm. right so what is your overall vision for the golden stars um, I want them to be as diverse as possible. Mm-hmm. I want people to think they're a part of SWEC. Like, I want people to make that mistake. Yeah. I want them to know that they, they don't have, not necessarily that they don't have to compete just with the, uh, the SIAC, but no, you are international. You are able to be whoever you want to be. Exactly. And I want my girls, if they want to go on and continue to perform, I want them to be able to have different avenues to do that. Right. I don't think that we had that. Like, nobody was trying to help us get to the next level but because i provide the like every thursday i put on shows here in birmingham so i have that atmosphere or that mm-hmm. um, avenue for my girls to be able to go and do something else and meet new people and right. you know actually go and find artists to dance behind mm. like or dance with or you go and put on your own stuff you don't have yeah. to dance behind anybody so yeah. i want them to know that yeah you are doing an amazing job here and i want them to have a great name for themselves now and really be out there. But at the same time, I want them to be able to have something to go to next. Exactly. Exactly. And you know, it's one thing that I do admire about, you know, you being over um, the Golden Stars. A lot of people really thought that once you became the coach, that it would be like a sting at 2.0. And I'm like, I already know. Shadam and I finna do that. Mm. No. So I'm I'm glad that, you know, you, you giving them the opportunity to like express themselves, you know, as dancers and you know come up, let them come up with a lot of things and you just critique them and do all that type of stuff so i love that and i love the two videos that came out baby that was cute thank you thank yes. you so much <laughs> yeah and I, I don't think people know like i used to i even was a banner girl for miles really like, i have so much relationship with miles their their coaches and their band directors were my band directors and coaches. Mr. Crawford, the man that I escorted or escorted me on the field mm-hmm. for my Turkey Day, I mean, my Magic City Classic, um, he was my band director in high school, but you were also the band director Miles. Mm. Like, the some of the people in our band would play in their band when we were younger, so the counts that they know, the, my girls were like, how do you know our counts? Because y'all <laughs> got them for J.O. Like, my old captain, Jasmine Butler, went to right. Miles. Like, that was the thing, like, so the relationship between Jackson Nolan and Miles is like big brother, look, look, like, or big sister, big brother, like, mm-hmm. it's right there, so I didn't even have a reason to want to steal the stuff from the singer. Actually, I took everything they did have that looked like a singer and took it out. Like, yes, ma'am. Yes. I don't, you're not going to copy nobody else, especially when you got so much creativity right here. Like, exactly. Y'all say y'all want to be professional dancers, show me. Like, yeah. don't steal they stuff. Yeah. Cause they ain't gonna do nothing but dog y'all out. Like, right. Mm, we don't got time for this. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So my last question: If you could, if you could have an all-star team of thirteen stingets, who would be on your team, child? Oh, let me get me an angel for us. Oh yes, including yeah. yourself though. Including yourself. Okay, so me, me. You said thirteen. Yeah. So that's twelve. That's my number. You know, that's my land. <laughs> me, Asia. Summer. Oh, yes, Spicy. Um, Chelsea. Can I get me a, a Jada? Oh. And a Janae. I don't care. Both of them. Um, give me a yes, man. Yes. Woo. Sick man. Put a captain. Put a captain out for the stands, huh? Um, Brianna. Three. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Give me her. What's the one that cut her hair? Amari. I like Sick her. Man. That's the one that did my count. Give me a her. Oh, Jesus. Give me some. Oh, uh, I'll take a Kiki. Yeah. I like Kiki. I love Kiki. Give me some Kiki. Give me some book. Yeah. Right. Give me a little book. <laughs> um, tell you about two. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think. Jesus, I'm drawing blank on the Sting Games. You almost done. I'm almost there. I need, what, two more? I think so. 
Well, let me just call a bits out because you say anything is. So let me get a hug. Yes. Um, let me see my last thing is. Thank you. Let me see. I bet it's somebody simple that I can call out. <laughs> I'm thinking of the lines. Oh, cricket. Oh, yes. Give oh, a sick thing. Give a she gonna give us a sick account. Yeah, yes. she is always now. That's period. Yes, that's ma'am. <laughs> well, I just want to thank you so much for being here. You gave us the tea, honey. Oh, yes, the diamond. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so weak. You are welcome. Thank you so much. Now I want you to have a great day. Okay. Thank you. All right, keep a smile I hope on you your have face. A great day too. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye.